Hello there, May Plom here, and I've got my Scan and Cut 2. I have the 650W model here, and there are some really amazing patterns on this machine that are already helping me with my early holiday crafting. And today I am excited to show you how I can combine one of the really fancy designs with a very simple design to create the front of a card. So I am going to go right into here, all my favorite doilies and snowflakes and intricate designs. Oh my goodness, so many beautiful designs to choose from. And one of the things I've been trying to figure out is how to best utilize these designs into a card. And what I have come up with is by combining these with a very simple design, I can get quickly and easily a folded card like so that I can then decorate or leave plain and have a really, I mean, it's going to look like we spent so much time on this. It's going to be fantastic. So I am going to size this up to five inches. I pick a nice even number so that I know what I'm starting with. And I'm going to go ahead and just move it over and then add. Now we want a basic shape. You could do a square. You just need some kind of basic space shape. Now just a hint, if you're trying to get a specific size of folded card and the dimensions are not available here, this is what I would do. At this point I would go back here to the screen and save this to a USB or since we're using the 650W, this is wireless network capable. Send this over to Scan and Cut Canvas and use Scan and Cut Canvas to create a custom sized second half. Now for me, I happen to know that I can just go ahead and use this basic design here and I'm going to make it just slightly taller than five, go five and a quarter, and then I can pull this over here and I know that this, let's see, we can move this all around first of all. I can move this down just a tiny bit and then this guy we can move over and how much we move it over, it depends on where exactly you want this design to land. I want it to land so that only that bird at the top there is going and only, I wanna make sure right down here, we can really zoom in and I love that. So I wanna make sure right in this area here and I can see that I'm going to need to nudge this piece over. There's a little teeny tiny spot over here that I want to make sure that I've got included just right. And it looks like everything, actually everything does look good. Wow, I managed that. So when you're ready, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your blade is set right. I'm using a little thicker cardstock. So I'm gonna set it at about five. And when you're happy, when you have everything ready to go, wait a minute, what's gonna happen if I cut right now? Well, what's gonna happen right now is it's gonna cut everything. So that's not gonna work, is it? No, we need to go in here, select everything, and we are going to weld this together. And it gives you a preview. I love that it gives you a preview. So you can look and see, is this exactly, are you sure? Is this exactly what you want to have? And the answer for me is yes, yes, yes. So we're gonna say, okay, now look, now it's only going to cut certain parts. All the overlapping parts have been removed. And it's cutting time. Now here comes the really super exciting part. Unload my mat. Here you can see my two examples, one white and one on a wood grain cardstock. Now that I've shown you how I can cut this out, let me show you how quickly I can color and decorate this to become a beautiful Christmas greeting. Now that I have my design cut, out and I'm gonna end up working on the white paper for this example. I wanna make this a really pretty Christmas inspired piece, but I don't wanna worry about if it's just perfect. So this is watercolor paper, which means that I can spray it down with water and it will be just fine. And I'm just gonna start by giving kind of a general wash of color so that I don't I kind of, have, kind of have a general idea of where I'm going with it, but also just so that I don't have to worry or stress too much about getting things for just right at the start. And I'm using some, some water-soluble oil pastels. You could use watercolors. You could use whatever you have or really whatever inspires you to create. 
I will put down a little piece of paper towel here to catch. I'm just going to drip. This is kind of a glossy gel medium type stuff. Uh, I'm going to do this step here for the main reason is if I put the gloss glaze and seal in those water reactive mediums, whether it's watercolor or whatever, it's going to make it so that when this dries and this is all settled nicely here, we're not going to have to worry about the inside of the card getting yucky from these mediums. It's going to seal it all up for us. And since we're going for kind of a washed look anyway, it should work out just fine. And then I'm just going to lift that up and you can see it already has kind of a shine. And this needs to be allowed. I'm going to need to stand this up so that nothing touches it because it, I don't want it to get over onto the front side. So I'm going to let that totally dry before we go back in and put a final coat on the front. Back onto the front here. There's a couple parts I want to make sure really stand out. And so what I am going to do next is to take some glossy and raised medium here. Oh, I do love this stuff. And just coat. I'm, I'm going for the edges first and then I'll fill it in. But I'm just gonna give my birdie a nice coat. Inside, it's all dry. Outside, it's also all dry. And what I have done here is I've stitched a little piece of vellum inside. Now, if you wanted to have it exactly the same, you could use the scanning cut and just cut the piece of vellum, just cut it maybe a quarter inch smaller than the shape and it would fit beautifully. But what I wanted right here is I wanted a torn edge. And I want this really so that when my card is closed, the vellum will kind of act as a shield between my design and whatever sentiment and words I write inside. So when I write inside here, it'll look more like, well, my handwriting is not so beautiful that I think it's going to look like a stamp, but it'll look a little more stamp-like. Now, to add a little bit of final touches here, we've got a lot of options. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of permanent ink here, and I'm going to take a little bit of a flourish stamp here in black, and I am going to press fairly firmly, but I do not expect the whole of the stamp to really lock on and be visible because I've got all these different textures and all this different stuff going on. I fully expect that only parts of the design are going to really show up. I hope that you have enjoyed this video tutorial. I know I am really excited about the possibilities of these beautiful intricate dyes used not just on mixed media or quilting or larger scale projects, but also smaller scale like this Christmas card. I wish you very happy crafting. I'll see you next time.